Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So it's been quite some time now since I made a, a bit of an indoor update and I thought I'd just let you all know how things are getting on. Um, there's been some changes and there's going to be some even bigger changes that I uh, really look forward to telling you about soon. But for now we'll start off with this windowsill and then in part two um, I'll let you in on uh, one of the changes and then maybe I'll do another part where I can let you know uh, something else that's happening. So um, all that's happened on this windowsill in terms of just like layout is I removed the mylar coating that was on here just because it was getting really worn away because I kept moving this left and right so um, it looks a little bit more stealth with it, with it all in black. So we'll start off on the right hand side. Oh, another big change actually that I should mention is I've changed the soil mix for the Horthia um, as you may be able to see. They're now growing in um, what is essentially another form of cat litter. It's called calcin clay and um, you may be able to see that the particle size is quite large on that one compared to the original one. I'll just grab um, grab a sample of the original just to show you what that one looked like. So this Gasteria little water, you can see the little orange particles in there. They're the um, Tesco cat litter and they're a smaller particle size. Um, I think it's called coarse sand, whereas this one would more be defined as a small pebble. Um, can't really get the two in the same shot together, but you get an idea. I think this one ranges from between one and four millimetres, whereas that one's more between, say, three and maybe eleven millimetres, so quite a big difference. Um, why did I put the Hawthier into this? Well, the more I kind of looked into Hawthier, the more... I read about people who were growing them in purely inorganic mixes and they were having really great results. So, um, you know, I thought I'd to give it a shot and see how I got on and ever since I've done it, um, things really seem to have perked up. They seem very happy because obviously there's so much air flow um, and so much air trapped into there that the roots are just uh, going mad really. So the only downside to this mix is that it is so well draining that... Um, it's actually quite hard to try and wet the whole soil because it doesn't pool up at the top and then and then drain. It just instantly drains through. The only other downside is um, the nutrition. Obviously there's no nutrition in there whatsoever, so every time you water you have to include a, a, a small dose of, of fertiliser. Um, so I think that's that really. Uh, if you're wondering why there's so many more horse here on my windowsill than you remember, then uh, it's because recently I did a bit of an unboxing video. And I got a lot of these from Cassia. Um, these were actually ones that I'd bought previously and um, I didn't have space for them so she looked after them for me. If you don't know who Cassia is, she's um, the owner of a, 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 a like a buying and selling of cacti, uh, sorry, of succulents. Um, she's got a, a succulent shop essentially and it's called Suck Shop. If you go on Facebook you'll find it. Anyway, I'm three minutes into the video, I've not not even talked about a plant yet, so here we go. Here's the Hawthia retusa. Really beautiful plant, seems to have perked up nicely since I've moved it into the soil. Great windows on that plant. Um, so that's that one. Then there's the Hawthia limifolia, and it's got lots of pups kind of developing around the outside. Quite tricky to show you from this angle. Maybe I'll pull it out and show you. So there's one and then there's there are more, you'll just have to take my word for it. They're kinda hidden underneath the surface and popping up. Um anyway, they'll become more apparent over time. Then we've got Hawthia Grey Ghost, which is a really nice one. a uh, variegated form of Hawthia. Um really beautiful detailed markings on the leaves that really show up nicely when they're in the sun. So that's that one. And then next up we've got Hawthia limifolia variegata and that one's um, just got two pups on it. I'll lift that one out as well. So as you can see there's um, a not particularly variegated one there but then the one that's on this side is um, quite quite variegated so that'll be nice. Really, really nice plant that one. I ho I really hope that it kind of grows out of this. 
you can see the person who I bought it from originally um, with them these these ends kind of snapped off and broke but um, it will grow out of that damage I'm sure so next up we have some little Warthia obtuser uh, pups that I removed from I think that one's probably the best one that I removed from um, that pot there just because it was getting a bit cramped in there so that's that one and then next up is Horthia Mutica Van Nigra. This one um, has struggled for quite a while, I think, from sitting in wet soil, so I'm really hoping that problem will be fixed by putting it in this uh, pure catalytic mix, um, but time will tell. I did take it out of the pot the other day just to check the roots, and it's gone a bit mad. Uh, lots, of, lots of new sh uh, roots kind of forming, so we'll see how it gets on. This is a variegated Hoarthia fasciata, or attenuata, I think it's fasciata. Uh, you can see those nice stripes running up the leaves. Um, I think this will look really good kind of over winter into the middle, uh, beginning of spring because it'll be cold. Um, and with the sun, hopefully it'll bring out some colour in it. Next one is one that I'm really uh, fond of. This is uh, what I believe is called Hoarthia green almond, but I'm not. 100% sure. Um, you can see it's got these really long leaves and then right at the top of these windows. Um, this is very limp at the moment, it hasn't really rooted. Well, I think it has rooted but it hasn't drawn up water yet. Um, so once it fills out I think it will look really nice. The next one, we'll move over to the left, so we've got um, Hoarthia pig, Pygmae e, uh, Argentio Maculota Huma. That's a long name of it. Anyway, it's got these nice little spots on the leaves and really nice windows, but it's uh, just started to grow lots of new roots and hopefully it'll start to fill out a little bit more by the next time I do an update for you. Uh, this one, not sure of the name of it, I'll try and find out, but it's uh, clearly like a stacking one that just grows up, I think. Um, I'm not sure on the name of this one either, it might be Hawthia Enon or something like that. Um, it looks like some type of pumilla with the little spots all over it. Uh, this one I'm not sure on the name of either. The, they get a bit tricky really, Hawthia, because a lot of them look quite similar. This is uh, my Hawthia obtuso, and uh, this I think is just starting to produce new roots and uh, suck up water because maybe I'll see this pup here has started to fill out a bit. Um, Next up we've got Hawthia truncata, which I've also um, noticed has poked up a little bit recently. It's got nice tiny tops to the leaves. Um, so there's that one. This one I think is Hawthia rideriana. It's got really nice windows. Um, and it's got markings on both sides. So I really like that one. This one is Hawthia black major. So it's, uh, with sun it gets like a really dark colour, almost chocolatey, but it has really nice windows as well. In fact, I'll lift it out and give you a look. So you, you can see those windows and it's it's got a bit of like a darker colour to it. So that's that one. Uh, next up, I'm not sure on the name of this one, it might be Hawthia Gilbrata or something like that. Um, I did ask the guy I bought it from, but he never actually gave me a response, so I'm just left in the dark a bit, really. This one is another Hawthia Black Major. Uh, really quite striking leaf markings, and um, it looks great with uh, with sun shining through it. So there you go, that's that one. So this is one of the things I like most about Hawthia, are just the way that the light shines through the leaves. They're just very unique, and uh, obviously all the patterns that are all over them. So if you don't own any, maybe uh, try and pick one up and see how you get on with it. And then last but not least for the um, smaller Hawthia, this is Hawthia tessellata. It's got a little pup on one side and then it's got another little pup uh, down in there somewhere. I'll take my word for it. And uh, this one is a really nice Hawthia turgida. Um, I'm actually after one called... Hawthia turgida var subarecta, 
It's very similar to this, but it's got lots of little spots all over the leaves, so um, I've never come across one, but if anyone um, has one, then I'm very jealous. So that's that one. Really nice with the light coming through once again. Covered in pups. So this one actually came from Suck Shop on Facebook, so um, I'd definitely check her out. She's got really good prices and uh, really nice plants as well. This one is Hawthia cymbiformis uh, variegata. As you can see, it's kind of just filled out. Lots of new pups forming, kind of squeezing themselves out of every uh, available g gap. So that's that one. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit tricky because it's so variegated that there's very, very little green in there. As you can see, there's just the odd stripe on uh, on some leaves. So time will tell whether that one will be viable to keep. Um, it's probably definitely not kind of producing enough to look after itself at the moment. But uh, we'll see. So that's that one. Um, I've actually got it this way around just to try and encourage more pups out because uh, a lot of them are like trapped in the middle and then this is the Hoarthia fasciata and uh, really nice plant it's really filled out lots of pups it's really greened up and I think I'll end this here actually because we're already like 11 and a half minutes in and I don't really want to drag it out too long so I have to change things up a little bit, so this can be part one, part two could be the rest of the windowsill, and then part three I can uh, tell you a little bit about what's going on, and then part four I'll tell you a little bit more about what's going on. So uh, I hope you look forward to that, and thank you very much for watching.